Hey everyone, Trev here with The Dark Room, and I'm going to be reviewing a camera that you probably don't hear much about or see much of, other than maybe on our own Instagram. It's not a Leica, it's not a FM2, F3, Pentax 6.7, Hasselblad, or one of the expensive um, point and shoots that you can get these days. Um, but it is a camera that has pretty much created 50% of the content that you've seen on our darkroom page over the past two years. Um, it's not a camera that's on anyone's top 10 list or most desirable, and you'll see why it is the Canon Rebel. You've probably heard about these cameras before, either because you've heard of the digital ones, um, but before digital, Canon made Rebels from the mid-90s, I believe, up into the early 2000s. And this is one of the newer early 2000 models. There are a lot of different models. But first, how I came to start shooting with this camera is five years ago when I got my first autofocus film camera. It was the Canon Elon 7. And I got this camera just because I found a good price on it and it fit my hand really well. And I just all the functions work for me. And I, I love this camera, but then naturally you want to upgrade. So I upgraded, well, I wanted to upgrade to the 1V because that's like the holy grail of EOS Canon lenses or cameras, um, but I couldn't afford that. So I went with the next best thing and that is the EOS 3. So the EOS 3 spec wise is technically better. You know, it shoots at an eight thousandth of a second, uh, which is really fast. It shoots six frames a second, which is also really fast, but I don't need that. It's a little more rugged. Um, but over the years, and actually the first couple of months, I started realizing that I would naturally go towards this camera it, because it is smaller and it is significantly quieter. This thing sounds like a samurai sword when you take a photo. It's just very loud. It draws a lot more attention because it's bigger. And this one also, the Elon 7 also has a pop-up flash, which I don't use too much, but on occasion, it's kind of convenient to have. And then two years ago, my wife, when she wanted to start shooting more film, she got a Canon Rebel, very similar to this. It was a different model, but very similar. She had the white 40 millimeter pancake and it was just kind of a goofy, not so attractive setup. And I didn't think much of it at first until I saw her photos. And her photos were just as good as mine on this camera or the EOS 3. They're just as sharp. Um, the metering was good. And, you know, that and that's the beauty of film cameras. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But so long story short... I got one for myself and I got the black 40 millimeter pancake lens. That's a uh, 2.8. And I love this. This is one of my favorite lenses. So the cool thing about, so first of all, look at that size difference. Um, this is Rebel and the EOS 3. And if you take this 40 millimeter pancake and you put it on the EOS 3 and you go out and shoot the same photos and the same scenes, you're gonna get the same images. You know, there's only a few little factors, like say you need a super fast shutter speed or it's really fast moving subject and you need slightly faster autofocus, then this might outperform it. But for the most part, for normal film photography, these cameras with the same lens, even if you don't use the same settings, you just use the meter reading. These have very similar meter. Me this one's a slightly more advanced meter, but I've never noticed a difference in quality between these two. And that's because outside of your own vision and creativity, when it comes to film, your quality of your image comes from your lens, your film, and your exposure. The body's just holding it together, basically, and has the meter inside of it. Um, so as long as you know how to use your in-camera meter and you, and your camera works well for you and you know how to use it, you should be able to get really good photos regardless of how expensive your camera is. And I, over the years, have started to use this more than my 
Elan 7 just because it's it's just works for me. It's very small. I'm not a, not a big person and you can see it's it's just a really small camera and especially with a lot of hype around point and shoots now with a lot of uh high end point shoots going for like their prices are just getting really high, you know, like the 35 Nikon 35 Ti and 28 Ti and the Minolta TC1 and the Contax T2 and T1 and there's a lot the Fuji class the Olympus Stylus Epic you name it this might be controversial but this camera is better than all of those it will take better photos than all of those cameras the only difference is it is bigger so it is a little bit bigger it's actually lighter than some of them but when it comes to image quality and versatility this camera is significantly better because you know if you want 28 millimeter like the nikon uh 28 ti you put a 28 millimeter on it if you want 35 you put a 30 on it you want anything else you put that on it you have that focal length you have faster autofocus you have manual focus you have manual mode you have um aperture priority shutter priority program you even have an auto mode and you even have a pop-up flash that works really well and will create just as good of results as any of those point and shoots. And this camera is very sharp. Well, the camera's not sharp. The lens is very sharp. And a lot of the other lenses are very sharp as well. And you can change your ISO. You can do double exposures with this. You can pick multiple different things. It's just a very versatile camera but also very cheap. And speaking of cheap, this one was $25. And this lens was bought used for $100, but brand new, it's $150. So, you know, even if you bought that lens brand new with this camera, you can find these cameras for $50 or cheaper um, everywhere. You know, KDH sells them. You can even find them on... Um, Facebook market and stuff like that. But I recommend buying them from a place that may have tested them. So you know that they're working well and that the flash works and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so if you want to learn more about this camera, if you want to see the photos that this camera has taken, be sure to check out the darkroom.com because we have a blog there that um, shows some of our favorite photos that this has taken and we also, if you have any questions about um, different, you know, models, there's a lot of different models. I think there's there's probably more than 10 different uh, Canon Rebels out there, but they're all uh, very similar. Th some of them vary. But if you have any questions about that or want any recommendations, let us know. And then also in the comments below, we would love to know what your equivalent is of this camera. Do you have a cheap camera that's maybe a Nikon or a Minolta or anything else. We'd love to hear what your cheap but still very good camera is. Um, we And it's fun talking about this because it's fun to share with you all that. It's not all about how much your gear costs. It's not how desirable um, your camera is and how good looking your camera is. This isn't the best looking camera, but it doesn't mean that it can't take good photos and it doesn't mean it's not enjoyable to shoot because I actually really do enjoy shooting with this camera because I don't have to think much. It's, it's just a very good camera. But yeah, until next time, 